Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I am Nicole and I live here in India. And today I'm going to be watching a video that is called The India's Rise as a Space Superpower, the incredible sport story of Spadex, Spadex, Space Docking Experiment. Now, this is a video put out by Think School. I really uh, enjoy their videos. I've done a couple different reactions from them. I will put those uh, uh, in the comments, um, not in the comments, in the description and uh, link that there. I'll also link this original video there for you as well. Um, I'm excited to see this. Now, you know, India went, you know, to the moon uh, this last year, I can say last year now. Um, what an incredible achievement and essentially on a shoestring budget <laughs> and they did it and it was amazing and you know I, I didn't even know about this space docking experiment let's go ahead and see what it's all about if you haven't already give me your like give me your subscribe and let's go Let's go. On 30th December 2024, India launched a mission that will go down as one of the most historic moments in our space journey. This mission is the SpadeX mission. The Indian Space Agency ISRO is gearing up for an exciting mission. ISRO is going to do what it has never done before. It prepares to launch its groundbreaking SpadeX mission. SpadeX. SpadeX. Today, it is so hard to believe how far we have come. Once, while the Soviets and Americans were racing to the moon and building their space empires, we in India were fighting to feed our people and rebuild our country. While the Americans were sending astronauts to walk on the moon, we were transporting satellite paths on our bullockards. While the Soviets were showcasing their space stations, we were waiting in line to use second-hand equipment from these powerful nations. But today, as the SpadeX rocket roars into the sky, it carries more than just payloads. It carries the hopes and dreams of 1.4 billion Indians. With this mission, India is not just launching a rocket, it is launching itself into the elite club of space faring giants. This club includes only three nations as of now, the United States, Russia and China. And now, India is going to be a part of this elite club. A technology which has been mastered only by Russia, America and China. It will be the first of its kind for India. And proving that India is ready for even more ambitious projects. India is entering into a completely new domain. The SpadeX mission is India's call to the future. A future where our children will look at the sky not as a limit but as a playground. And as the rocket breaks through the clouds, it carries the weight of history and the promise of a better tomorrow. The world has watched America and Russia rule the space for decades. But now, it's India's turn to lead. And lead we will with the boldness of a billion hearts beating as one. This is not just a launch. This is a moment that says India has risen and we are never looking back. The question is, why is this SpadeX launch such a big deal for India? How will this experiment work and how will it change the face of India? Chalo, let's start from the basics and see what exactly is this SpadeX mission. People, the SpadeX mission stands for Space Docking Experiment and it is by far the most historic step in India's journey of space exploration. And here's what is going to happen in this launch. ISRO is going to launch a rocket with two important satellites in it. Each of these satellites weigh 220 kgs. While one is called the chaser, the other is called the target. Now when the rocket goes up, these satellites will be launched in space in different directions 
to keep them 10 to 20 kilometers apart and both these satellites will start traveling at a staggering speed of 28800 kilometers per hour or 8 lakh centimeters per second now do you realize these satellites will move almost 10 times faster than a bullet and while traveling at this staggering speed isro is going to make them do something absolutely crazy isro is going to make them do a space handshake so here's what will happen next. These two satellites, while traveling at 28,800 km per hour, they will coordinate their moment using thrusters in such a way that the relative speed will come down to just 0.036 km per hour, as in just 1 cm per second. Which means if the chaser is moving at 8 lakh centimeters per second, the target will move at 7 lakh 99,999 centimeters per second. And this, my dear friends, is an engineering miracle because yeah. even the smallest miscalculation could result into a collision and both these satellites will get destroyed. So now the chaser will adjust its position with millimeter level accuracy and then slowly at 28,800 kilometers per hour speed, the advanced sensors and computers will analyze every millimeter of movement, even the micro angle of movement in such a way that both these satellites can latch onto each other. This act is called docking and this docking maneuver is so delicate and so unbelievably complex that even the smallest mistake could end it all in a flash. And when these two satellites will lock together out there in the vastness of space, it's not just a docking, it is India shaking hands with its destiny. And when the stars look down on us tonight, they won't see a poor country, they will see a rising superpower. And this brings us to the next question. Why are we spending so much money to dock these satellites together and what is the advantage that this experiment is about to give us? The first challenge that this docking will solve for is the satellite launch cost. Did you know, today when a satellite runs out of fuel or develops a technical glitch, we have no choice but to launch a brand new satellite. Now mind you, each satellite launch today is so costly that it costs us anywhere between 30 to 40 thousand dollars per kilo of payload. So if you launch a 200 kilo satellite with an average cost of 35 thousand dollars per kilo, it will cost us 7 million dollars or 56 crore rupees. And a polar satellite launch vehicle costs us 200 to 250 crores. But by mastering docking, India can send up a specialized repair or refuel vehicle which can service these satellites in the orbit itself. And if we succeed in this experiment, we can service these satellites and extend their lifespans by 5 long years. So this mission will make Indian satellite missions far more economical and competitive. Secondly, it gives us the superpower to launch our own space station, which we are calling the Bharat Antariksh Station or BAS. This space station is going to be launched by 2035. But here's the problem. You see, the space station is almost like a building and you can't launch the yeah. entire space station in one piece. One you have to launch all the pieces separately and in space, these pieces are supposed to be assembled together. So every piece has to do a space handshake which requires this core skill of talking. And the SpaceX mission is being executed to acquire this skill. And more importantly, once we have our space station, it again pushes us to the cutting edge of science and technological research. On top of that, by 2040, India is planning to send an Indian astronaut to the moon and with Chandrayaan-4, we aim to bring back lunar samples. Both of these missions will require precise docking technology. This is the second superpower that SpaceX mission will give us. Now, you guys might be wondering, why is a business channel like Think School talking about space exploration? Well, this brings me to the third superpower that SpaceX mission gives us, which is the growth of space business ecosystem in India. Totally. Ladies and gentlemen, SpaceX is perhaps the most critical event for both investors and entrepreneurs because it sends out three loud messages to the business ecosystem of India. The first message is the historic public-private partnership in the space sector of India. For the first time ever, a private Indian company assembled satellites for an ISRO mission. This company is called Ananth Technologies. This sends out a clear message to the venture capital is that India is now open to private businesses in space. The second message is for the space entrepreneurs of India. Did you know that the Indian government has already announced a rollout of 1000 crore rupees in funding for space startups across 5 years? And even VCs are pouring in billions of dollars into the space sector of India. 
these happenings have triggered a massive surge of space startups in India. From just 11 startups in 2019 to 250 startups in 2024, the Ooh. Indian space sector is growing faster than ever. That's and lastly, fabulous. India is importing a lot of important space mission materials from US and Europe at the moment. We import carbon fiber reinforcement polymers from China and the United States. We import gallium arsenide solar cells from the US and we import cryogenic engine materials from Russia. So there's a clear message by the Indian government that we need to be self-reliant and we need to substitute these imports with homegrown technologies. So any startup that succeeds in this mission will get the support of both the VCs and the Godfather, which is the yeah. government of India. Yeah. And this brings us to the last question, which is what the foreign media often keeps asking us. They say that while India has so many poor people, why is India launching satellites? So to these media houses, I have to tell you, that when you ask these questions, it seems like you need to be educated more than the very people that you presume to lecture. And since your mm. government has not educated you enough, let me do that explanation for you. Let me explain why India's space program is not a luxury, but a necessity. Okay. You see, firstly, India's space technology is directly tied to the welfare of its people. Take ISRO satellites for an example. They monitor weather patterns, predict cyclones, and help evacuate millions of people in time. In fact, in 2019, when Cyclone Fanny hit, India saved over 1 million lives because of satellite-based disaster management. Secondly, satellite communication is supporting financial inclusion in India. It connects 1.25 lakh VSAT ATMs in India to the internet. And annually, this allows 5 billion ATM transactions. And lastly, satellite-driven precision agriculture helps farmers by forecasting monsoons and it helps them optimize crop planning. This yeah. benefits over 120 million small-scale farmers in India, many of whom depend on accurate data to survive. So satellites are not a waste of money, they are life-saving and they are necessary for the people of India. And for every one rupee that ISRO gets, it gives back 2.5 rupees to the people of India. So I think you should stop worrying about the hungry people in India and you should take care of the drug addicts in your own country. Yes. This is the vision, challenge and progress of India in the space sector with this mission, which is called the SpadeX mission. And I just hope you learned something valuable from this case study. That's all from my side for today, guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to the like. Fabulous. Thank you. Thanks, school. I did learn something valuable. And I... Um, I really enjoyed this video. Uh, I did not know that the uh, Spadex um, was a was a project or was actually happening, um, ongoing. It's really so interesting, and you know, I, I'm not Indian, but I'm I'm so proud. Like that's fabulous. It's it's amazing that they're doing this work and that they have these plans. You know, once they do the docking between the satellites, they're going to move into creating an actual space station. You know, they want to do a lunar landing with an astronaut and bring back soil samples. I just, it's just amazing. And, you know, to see where the country started, you know, 80 years ago and where it is now. It's amazing. It just, it's fabulous. All right, people, that's my reaction. If you like it, give a like, give a subscribe. If you'd like me to watch something else, please put it in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. As always, I love you and bye-bye.